If you are new to photo editing, colour grading can sometimes be quite daunting, and if you're not happy with your colours or you just think they look ugly, it's usually down to one reason – white balance. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a quick trick on how you can get far better white balance in your photos just using Lightroom. And I'm going to start right now. So let's take this photo as an example. We can clearly see that the colours are off. I've actually already colour graded this photo, but because I haven't corrected the white balance, it just hasn't, the, the colours just look off. So I can actually show you the before and then the after. Although it does look better, you can clearly see that the colours just don't look right. And it's got nothing to do with the quality of my colour grading. It's all down to my white balance. Because all colours are based off my white balance, the colours just look off. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually fix that. So firstly, go over to your develop panel, and now what we're going to do is drop down to our basics panel, where we can find right underneath our camera profile our white balance. And it's kind of split up into three sections. You've got your eyedropper tool, you've got your two main sliders, as well as you've got your presets. And what I'll do is I'll talk about the presets first, because if you're a beginner, it's probably something you'll understand. Now, as if we go ahead and click on as shot, you can see we've got a whole bunch of presets available. And these are white balance presets. And the ones that they actually should mirror the ones inside your camera. So you should see in your camera, daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, and they're actually really helpful. So if you always shoot on cloudy, for example, if I go ahead and click on that, it will always set it to the cloudy mode. So the numbers will always be the same, which is really helpful. So if you always shoot on cloudy, and then for some bizarre reason, your camera wasn't on the cloudy white balance setting, can actually change it inside Lightroom if you were shooting in RAW, which is something that was really helpful. But obviously, it hasn't helped us in our situation. It's made the photo look even worse. Then, if we go ahead over to our sliders here, these are the ones we probably are going to be using in this video. We've got our temperature slider and our tint slider. Now, our temperature slider controls the amount of yellow or the amount of blue found within our photo, basically the temperature of light found within our image. But you've also got tint as well, which is usually forgotten about when it comes to white balance. And that controls the amount of green or the amount of magenta. And if you have a look on the color wheel, you can see each one is at a 90 degree point of each other. So they're all equally distant, which is why they're all equally as important. Obviously the temperature slider is the one that most people focus on, but never forget about the tint slider because it's just as important, especially if you're looking at an odd color cast within your photo. Now, we could mess around with these sliders, just try and move them around, trying to work out exactly what we like, but most of the time you'll probably spend hours trying to get this to look right. So what is the quick trick I was talking about at the start of this video? Well, actually, it's to do with the white balance selector. Now, you don't have to use a grey card for this, because I'll show you a quick trick. So if we hover over something random within the image, we can see that the targeted picker tool right at the bottom has three numbers. We've got a red, green and blue number, and they're the percentage values. Now, all colors in the visible spectrum are made up of three primary colors, red, green, and blue. And the percentage value, or the combination of those, creates all of the colors in the visible spectrum. And what the white balance selector tool does is it measures on a specific swatch or specific pixel that we've chosen, what is the percentage value of red, green, and blue found within our image. And it's measured in a percentage. So for example, 100% red, 100% green, and 100% blue would make white. So it would add up to 300%. So for this, to create gray, you want these numbers to be the same. So you want, let's say, 50% red, 50% green, and 50% blue. So let's go and try and find that within our image. So for example, if we hover over now, we've got 39, 43 and 22. Now, ideally, you want them within a 5 to 10% range of each other. Try and get them as close as possible. It is very difficult to find uh, exactly. So I would say within 5 to 10% is usually okay. So let's say we hover over here. Now, this is looking a little bit better. We've got 92, 93, and 85 there, well within 10%, but I think we can do better. So let's go over to the right here a little bit more. Uh, we're still just trying to increase that. So we go up a little bit. And these numbers are really close. So you can see we've got 88, 90, and 92. So they are all within 10% value of each other. So all you'll need to do for this is then go ahead and simply click. And as you can see, already that's looking far, far better. Now, in my opinion, it's probably a little bit too much magenta. So then you can make slight nuanced changes. So I might add a little bit more green in there, but only by around about maybe... Let's go for 27 in this case. So what I recommend doing, if you're really struggling for the white balance, 
all you'll need to do is try and match those three numbers as close to each other. So for example, 25%, 25%, 25%. As long as those numbers are within a 10%, then you should have ideally gray, which means you can actually use the white balance tool on any photo of your choice. Thank you to all of my YouTube members that are currently supporting the channel. If you guys wanna support the channel and get some awesome perks, including free Lightroom presets, make sure to go ahead to the link in the description. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next week.